Good morning, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and hope you're having a great day. Hope you had a great holiday. Um, hope you had a great Christmas, great New Year's. I know I did and my family, and uh, so I hope you did as well. Um, we're in a new year. This is January 17th, 2021. This is my first video of the new year, and so today I thought what I would do is uh, show you how to convert uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS GNOME 3 very customized uh, desktop experience uh, into a vanilla GNOME 3 experience and so um, we're going to take you out to uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and show you how to do that up on the uh, website right now uh, at ubuntu.com and um, if you click on the download link first thing I did was um, clicked on this button here for under the Ubuntu desktop you've got this desktop server for IoT and for cloud, I've got for desktop here. I clicked on the 2004 LTS button and downloaded the ISO file, which is about two and a half gigs to three gigs in size, and installed it in my favorite hypervisor, VirtualBox 6.0. And um, that's how I'm going to present uh, the operating system to you when I show you how to make the conversion today. So let's get on over to VirtualBox and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, I'm out on the desktop here for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, and here it is. Um, not a bad looking uh, desktop appearance itself. Uh, it does have some functionality, though, that I'm not particularly keen on. It is the uh, very gnomish looking desktop. Um, but the problem is it has the Unity look here with the panel. I'm not very keen on the panel. A lot of people aren't as well. The uh, desktop icons are out here, and I don't care for those either. So I'm going to show you how to take this GNOME 3 very customized appearance and turn it into a, a vanilla GNOME 3 appearance. And I'll get into the steps here right now. So let's go into the show applications and bring up the terminal. Let me open the terminal up. Let me expand that terminal so you can see a little better. I think that should be about right. And so first thing I'm going to do here is run uh, a listing out of the block devices. And so I'm going to do an lsblk command. And you can see that we have uh, a GNOME 3 34-1804 desktop here, but it's presented as a snap package. All right, so these are loops here, loop devices. We've got loop 0 through loop 4. And snap is controlling the GNOME 3 desktop environment here. Um, you could uh, take care of that by removing this particular GNOME 3 desktop by just simply running sudo uh, uh, snap remove GNOME 3-34-1804. could do it that way, uh, and that would remove the GNOME 3, and then we could replace it, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not a big uh, user of snap either, and so what I'm going to do is get rid of snap altogether. So in order to get rid of the GNOME 334-1804 desktop here uh, being controlled by SNAP, SNAP-D, it's going to require me to uh, unmount the loop devices and then get rid of SNAP-D altogether. So the first thing I need to do is run a, a, a U-mount uh, command to uh, remove the loops. And so here we are uh, in the desktop. And so the first thing I need to do is do a sudo U-mount uh, dev loop zero that removes and then let me put in my password okay so that removed the first loop device and to repeat that I'm just going to up arrow backspace and place the zero with a one and hit enter okay so we removed loop one and so let's remove loop two the same way enter and then loop three it's backspace enter and then finally up arrow backspace put a four in there hit enter and so we now should have all four of those loop devices removed and so in order to check this let's go ahead and run the uh, lsblk again and uh, oh well, I forgot to remove snap so let's go ahead and remove snap so let's do a sudo apt purge snap d let's remove snap altogether All right, and let's hit yes, let it remove snap. Okay, 
And so if we uh, run an LSBLK one more time, you can see that now the uh, snap packages have been removed, so there are no loops there for loop devices. And so now we've removed the GNOME 3 um, desktop environment from the snap package that's being controlled by snap. And so what we need to do now is we need to um, um, install replacement for that. So let's do a sudo, let me do a clear the screen, sudo apt uh, install GNOME session and uh, hit yes for that and let's replace the GNOME session here and this is going to take a few seconds um, for it to uh, to make that replacement happen uh, so be patient so rule of thumb with Linux is be patient don't interrupt the terminal in, in mid command if you can help it and uh, so now we need to reboot the system uh, alright so let's go ahead and do a reboot And it's coming back up now. And after the uh, system comes back up, we get back in. After we log in, I'm going to go ahead and recheck for those block devices to make sure those block devices, loop 0 through loop 4, have been removed from the system and uh, SnapD is no longer there. So let's go ahead and log in. And uh, here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the terminal one more time. And let me bump that up again. And let's run that lsblk command. And yes, you can see all of the loop devices have been removed. SnapD has been removed from the system. And so we're good to go here. All right, so the next thing we need to do here is we need to install the remaining packages for our vanilla uh, GNOME environment. And so to do that, I'm going to issue uh, to a command here, which is sudo apt install vanilla dash uh, gnome dash um, desktop and vanilla dash gnome dash uh, default settings. Okay. All right, so it's sudo apt install vanilla GNOME desktop and vanilla GNOME default settings. Let's hit enter. Hit the uh, enter the password. And uh, let's go ahead and do say yes to this. It's going to be uh, quite a few packages to install, 113 of those. It's going to take a while. So I am going to pause the video and come back when this is completed. Okay, so that process has completed now, and uh, so the next thing we need to do, that took about five minutes, so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, clear the package cache. So let me go ahead and clear the screen, and to clear the package cache, I'm going to run the command sudo um, apt clean, all right, and then I'm going to follow that up with sudo apt uh, auto remove to remove any packages we don't need in the system. And it says uh, I can go ahead and do that. Say yes. And auto remove those. Okay, so that took care of that. Let's go ahead and reboot the PC one more time. And when uh, we reboot this time and we come up to log in, I'm going to show you what you need to check. And this depends on what type of graphics card you're running in your system, uh, which option you should choose. And I'll show you that uh, here momentarily. And we should get to the login screen here, and then I'll show you uh, what I was talking about earlier.
Okay, we're at the login screen again. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my name. And before I log in and put my password in, let's come over here to the right-hand side. There's a gear over here, and if you click it, you have various options of desktop environments that you can choose from. This one's Ubuntu. You've got the GNOME on Xorg, which is X11 window manager, and you've got the plain GNOME, okay? Um, if you're using uh, an NVIDIA card, you probably want to use the GNOME on Xorg, okay, for the X11. Definitely don't want to use the Wayland because Wayland and NVIDIA cards don't get along. And so you could choose this GNOME on Xorg and be fine. Um, if you're using AMD or Intel uh, integrated graphics, you can use the GNOME option. And since I'm using uh, VirtualBox, it doesn't really matter which one I choose. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the one that you would use if you were using your NVIDIA card, which is the GNOME on Xorg. So I'm going to select that one. And then I'm going to put in my password and get in. Okay, so you can already see that we have a change in the background uh, appearance uh, that we had earlier uh, from what we had earlier. And so what it, first thing I want to do here is uh, change the background. So you can right-click on the desktop, change background, and you should have uh, some options come up. And let me take a look at some of these and see which one I want to choose. I think I want to select this one right here. Uh, you have many to choose from. Um, if you go on down, take a look. Okay, got uh, oh, at least what uh, four times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty-six options to choose from here. Selections. So I'm going to choose this one, and here go out of it. All right, so here we are. We're on the uh, new desktop background. All right, so the first thing I need to do here is run the GNOME tweaks tool. All right. And so if I go up to Activities and click the applications here and type in for type of search, I'm going to type to search, I'm going to do Tweaks Tool, start typing Tweak, and it'll bring up the Tweaks Tool. All right, and so the Tweaks Tool should open up. All right, and so first thing I want to do here is get over to Appearance. And under Applications, I want to change this Adweta default to uh, Yaru Dark, okay. Then I want to change the cursor to Yaru, and change the icons to Yaru as well. All right. And once we do that, let's go over to Extensions, and under Extensions here, let's enable the User Theme. So let's come down uh, to User Themes and enable that. All right. And then the next thing I want to do here is um, restart the tweak tool. So let me go ahead and close this and let me come back up and restart the tweak tool again. And so let's uh, bring up tweaks and let's go back into appearance again and under shell now that it's opened up let's go ahead and click default and select Yaru Dark for the shell as well. Uh, under extensions here um, Let's uh, come down to um, see what I want to do here. Desktop icons. Uh, let's see here. Trying to find it. Desktop icons. Yeah, you can turn that on if you like so that desktop icons will appear here. Um, the whole point of my getting a vanilla desktop environment is not to turn that on. So I'm going to turn that off and leave that off. You, It's your choice. Um, let's go down to um, places status indicator and let's enable that and what that does is that puts an indicator up here for where you are in the system um, let's see um, let's look at removable disk well the removable removable drive menu rather and uh, let, me, let me see if I can scroll that down there we are Let's enable the removable drive menu and um, Ubuntu app indicators. Let's go ahead and turn that on. All right. So that's going to turn that support for app indicators in the top panel uh, as the default Ubuntu experience. Okay. And then 
workspace indicator. Let's see if we can find that. And we go and turn that on. That turns on the workspaces up here on the right hand side at the top of the toolbar. And then down under top bar, let's come up to weekday and let's turn weekday on. So that turns the weekday on here in the center of the panel. Um, and then um, let's also turn on the Windows title bars and let's turn on the maximize and minimize so that brings the maximize and minimize buttons here on the windows and turns those on as well it's good to have those let's go ahead and close the tweak tool now and uh, let's go ahead and start Firefox and so let me do an activities and Firefox web browser let's turn that on and let me bring that up to full screen okay and close that and uh, first thing I want to do here is uh, type in GNOME shell extensions in the uh, window here so let's do GNOME uh, shell extensions bring that up alright so let's click on this link here for GNOME shell extensions and uh, when you get to this page let's click on this link here it says click here to install browser extensions let's go ahead and click that and let's click continue to installation let's click add and OK got it go ahead and click that and then let's refresh the page alright so we're on the extensions page here so in this search window for search for extensions let's search for uh, a few extensions that we need to install and the first one that we need to install here is um, open weather so let's uh, let's uh, let's click on the open weather one down below we don't need to really search for that one and let's uh, click on that and when we get that one to come up um, we'll need to activate it and so here it should have had an activation come open here we go and so here we are uh, on the open weather and this is a little weather widget that comes up so that gives you the weather on your uh, panel on your desktop and so let's go ahead and activate it and click install and so that brings the weather up here you can configure that uh, I, in fact I'll go ahead and do that now so I'm gonna right click on it click on this weather gear here let me bring it over and uh, let me uh, type in the plus sign put in my city here Asheville North Carolina. Let's do a find on that. Should find it. There it is. And click save. And let me click on the uh, what's already highlighted here on the one that was by default and click the minus down below. It says do you want to remove that? Yes I do. And let me close it. And so now we have the weather for my particular area in Asheville, North Carolina. Alright so we've got that one installed. Let's go back and click on extensions and then the search for extensions let's click in there and let me click on uh, let me type in rather clipboard uh, indicator and there we are so the clipboard indicator let me click on that and let me turn the clipboard indicator on and when you turn that on and hit install it puts a little clipboard indicator up here which is kind of nice to have you can search here if you can turn on private mode you can clear your history so it keeps track of the history of your system that's a good thing to have all right, so that one's turned on. So let's click on extensions again and get back into the uh, search box here. And let's click uh, in there and type in dash to dock. All right, so the dash to dock GNOME shell extension. Let's click on that. And let's go ahead and turn that on and install it. All right, and uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, click in the extensions again and we'll use the dash to dock uh, extension here in a moment click in there again and let's do um, uh, let's see sound uh, sound input and output device chooser that's a nice one to have and I'll show you why in a moment so let's activate that and let's install that
And uh, what that does is that puts this uh, sound uh, widget up here, um, extension, which contains your, uh, your uh, wired and wireless adapter connections and settings and other things. It allows you to power off and lock your system and that kind of thing. Um, so that's a good one to have as well. All right. So let's, uh, now that we have that, let's go ahead and close the browser and reopen the tweak tool. So let's go ahead and close the Firefox browser. And let's reopen. Now we've got the panel on the left again. And so let's uh, open up the tweaks tool one more time. And when we get into the tweaks tool here, uh, let's go to the extensions. And here we can go and customize each one of these extensions that we installed. And so um, let's look at the dash to dock one. That's the one I want to concentrate on. So we already have it activated. But to the left of it is this little gear. All right. And so let's click that gear to configure it. Let me move this out of the way. Let me bring this over. All right. And so first thing I want to do here is I want to position on the screen and change that to bottom. So here for the position on screen under the position and size there's currently it's on the left so I want to change that to bottom and so that put it at the bottom here and I want to change the size of this from of the icon size limit from uh, 48 down to 32 so I'm going to move the bar down left click and move the bar and then um, you can tell it to auto hide by intelligent auto hide I'm going to turn that off, leave mine to it always up and up and running, and it doesn't auto hide intelligently. You, uh, your choice. If you want to leave it uh, activated, you can. All right. And then the uh, last thing we want to do here is we want to go to appearance, and we want to tell it to um, shrink the dash. And so let's enable shrink the dash, so that shrinks it down even further. All right. And so let's go ahead and close this, and we've completed the process. All right, so what we have now is we have, um, let's turn activities. Activities now, we can do it uh, for other applications. We can choose that from here, uh, which is the different uh, workplace environments, so we can have it here of workspaces. But now the uh, Show Applications button is down here, and so we do it to all. You can see all of the applications that are there. Uh, so let's do that again, all right, and so you can have them all come up. Uh, but everything's at the bottom now, and it's nice and uh, small, and it's at the bottom, it's not on the left. Uh, you've got your activities button, you've got your places to show, you know, your documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, etc., etc., browse the network. In the middle here, you've got a, a you know, a um, calendar, in, and you can show selection for weather. Um, you can turn off the notifications as well. And uh, so let's go ahead and click, close that. And you've got your time here, and you can configure that time any way you want. Um, you've got your weather application here on the right-hand side. And then you've got your clipboard extension that we installed. You've got your workspaces, and you can modify that as well. And um, But right now it's in automatic mode. And then you've got your um, sound input and output device extension that we installed. And um, that's it. And so this has been um, showing you how to convert your out-of-the-box Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, very customized GNOME 3 extension or desktop environment, rather with the, those extensions with the, the very Unity-looking uh, panel on the left into a very uh, vanilla GNOME 3 experience as I've shown you how to do it here and you can replicate that. I also have a an article that I did uh, up on my DP Network uh, blog which I'll put a link to down below the video that shows you how to to replicate this step by step uh, if you don't want to go back and look at the video again you can either go back to the video and follow it step by step as I've shown you here or read my article and achieve the same purpose and so this has been a quick video on uh, GNOME 3 vanilla experience in Ubuntu 2004 LTS to replace the out-of-the-box experience hope you had a great day hope this video was helpful if it was please click that uh, up button um, to uh, give me a thumbs up to like my video that helps my channel. 
I'm pushing to get a thousand subscribers. I'm very close right now, and uh, a, a like from you would help. Also, uh, in that vein, if you would uh, click on the subscribe button and hit that bell off to the right hand side when you do, and you'll get notified every time I upload a video. I'd appreciate it. The, appreciate that as well. That will really help my channel uh, and grow my subscribers. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.